Real quick, I've got a quiz for y'all. Won't take long, just three questions. Okay, first question. Is this a foul? Well, now with Zach Collins got him. on him. Joel off count it and the foul. If you answered no, you would be correct. Good job. Okay, it's gonna get a bit harder now. Is this a foul? The corner, the ball fake that he's so good at. No, another offensive rebound from Embiid, and Osman blocked him. I lied. It didn't get any harder, because if you said no, you again are correct. Now, last question, and this will stump even the biggest Hoops fans. Is this a foul? Simon. Reese Maxi over to Joel Embiid, who already dropped. And you got it right, because of course you did, because this is obviously not a foul. At least not to anyone who's played or watched or even been around basketball at any capacity in their life. And yet Joel Embiid continues to feast off of these phantom calls night after night. How is he doing this? Has he performed witchcraft on these refs? Does Embiid have dirt on Adam Silver? How is this a foul? Is Joel Embiid cheating the game? Or is he just using the rules to his advantage like countless other players before him? Today's video is sponsored by Factor 75. Factor is a gourmet meal kit service that makes hitting your nutritional goals easier than ever before by delivering fresh, never frozen, dietitian approved meals right to your doorstep. Skip the grocery trips, the meal prepping, the cleanup, the hassle with Factor's pre-prepared meals that are ready to eat in just two minutes. Factor sweats the small stuff so you don't have to. Their registered dietitians work hand in hand with their kitchen to ensure every meal is made from scratch with nutritious ingredients. They've got keto meals, calorie smart meals, vegan, and plant-based options, so you're not only cutting out the time it takes to prepare a meal, with Factor, you're taking out all the guesswork that comes with grocery shopping and meal prepping. This week, I went with a calorie-friendly meal plan. I got my meal, tossed it in the oven, and just two minutes later, your boy is ready to go. Head to Factor75.com or click the link below and use code HIGHROLLER50 to get 50% off your first Factor box and free wellness shots for life. That's two free wellness shots from three available flavors for every order while you are an active subscriber. Sign up now at Factor75.com. Do y'all remember back in the early 2000s when Shaquille O'Neal was so dominant that teams would just hack him on purpose to try to stop him? I mean, the strategy was genius. Throughout his prime, Shaq shot 76% from the field within three feet of the hoop. Send him to the line where he shot an abysmal 52%, and you've essentially found yourself an in-game cheat code. Every time a team fouled Shaq while he was deep in the paint, they saved themselves about a half a point. Foul him enough, and this half point advantage starts to add up very quickly. And so this is exactly what teams did. From 2000 through 2002, the three-year peak of Shaq's NBA career, he attempted 11.4 free throws a game, leading the league in free throw attempts every season by a wide margin. Over the past three seasons, Joel Embiid has averaged 11.8 free throw attempts per game. Let me say that again. Shaquille O'Neal lived in the paint and was getting sent to the line on purpose so much that the act of fouling him literally has its own name and Joel Embiid somehow shoots more free throws than he did. Ladies and gentlemen, this shouldn't be possible, and yet it is. Throughout the last 45 years of modern NBA history, Embiid has more career free throw attempts per game than any other player, with now over 10 free throw attempts per game. The first player to climb over double digits since Will Chamberlain did it in the 60s. James Harden spent half a decade as the best scorer in the league and was almost disregarded throughout those four years because of his foul baiting and rule bending. And even he is all the way down here. But Embiid's knack for drawing fouls goes even further because here are the most frequent free throw shooters in NBA history based on free throw attempts per 36 minutes. Here's LeBron, here's Jordan, here's James Harden, and way up here is Shaquille O'Neal. And here's Joel Embiid. This is outrageous. The foul merchant label Embiid has earned himself over the last few years, as harsh as it is, may just be the reality of his game. 
This season, Embiid has been on a tear, averaging the second most points per game in a season in modern NBA history and being well on his way to winning back-to-back -back MVPs. It's been a historic season for the big man so far. His team is winning, he's putting up big numbers and historic performances. We should be celebrating Embiid right now, but we're not. The NBA community has collectively turned its back on Joel and rebuked his achievements this season because the man is cheating. Well, not really, but kind of. He isn't breaking any rules or anything. He's just breaking the sort of unwritten code laid in place for NBA players around the league. The antics, the gimmicks, the way he's drawing fouls and flopping all over the court has become so egregious that even 36 points a night has not spared him from criticism. Last week, Embiid had a monster performance against the Spurs where he dropped 70 points and 18 rebounds on 68% true shooting. According to the NBA's game score metric, Embiid's game ranks as the fourth best single game performance in modern NBA history. But instead of cheers and amazement, fans were left unimpressed, even repulsed by the clinic Embiid put on. All of this criticism stemming from one major issue people have with Embiid's game right now. Free throws, free throws, and more free throws. 70 points is mind-boggling, but if 30% of those points come from the line and how you got to the line was suspect in the first place, does this performance still have any merit? Or is it just one big display of how a player has mastered the loopholes and gimmicks of the game we love? Well, it's probably a little bit of both. We know teams foul Giannis a lot to slow him down. We know Kobe Bryant was a master at baiting players into fouls. And we just discussed how Shaq got to the line so much because teams wanted him there. Embiid, on the other hand, is probably closer to a prime James Harden in this sense than he is to a traditional dominant big. For years, NBA fans couldn't stand the way James Harden played the game. His point totals were seen as just a symptom of the way he would bend the rules to his favor and manipulate the games to boost his numbers. And he might have actually been able to beat these allegations if his antics actually worked in the playoffs. But they never quite did. Embiid, at least at this moment, is cut from the same cloth. Crazy numbers, historic nights, while stacking up scoring titles off of seemingly pure tricks and schemes. At least this is the general perception right now. But is this the reality of Embiid's game? Or are we just a bit too skeptical of his dominance? Here's a game where Shaquille O'Neal scored his career-high 61 points during the 1999-2000 NBA season. By this point, the hack shack was in full effect. Teams were fouling the man just to stop him from scoring in the post. But look at some of these foul calls throughout this game. This doesn't appear to be a foul, and yet it was called as one. This was also called a foul, and so was this. Here's a shooting foul where the defense hardly even made contact, and here's another one that really didn't need to be called. Throughout this game, Shaq got to the line 12 times. These phantom calls made up six of those trips and eight extra points on the board for the big man. Here's a game from Michael Jordan's 1989-1990 season, the game where he scored a career-high 69 points, and by this point, he was the NBA's premier superstar. And so he got superstar calls, Pippen, like this one, from long range. Jordan with a rebound. and this one, Jordan gets Elo airborne. oh, Jordan. and this one too. In fact, during this away game, Cavaliers fans were losing it over the disparity in calls and favoritism the refs were showing Michael. Into the seven-footer, Purdue. Uh, Cleveland wanted to get a foul against Jordan. It didn't come. Here with another rebound. Now watch Michael get to the line here. They're going to really get mad. <laughs> he got into the paint, gets the two. And for good measure, here's another one. The existence of superstars getting treated different than other players is not new to the NBA. And I show you all of this to say that not only is Joel Embiid not the first player to use the rules to his advantage, but he's also not the first player to receive favorable superstar treatment. A few years ago, Peter Lee, a data analyst and NBA fan, wrote a great piece about the idea of superstar calls and the validity of their existence. Within his research, Peter collected all of the last two-minute data from the NBA dating from 2015 to 2019 and put each type of foul within these reports into different categories. Incorrect calls, or calls made when there wasn't actually a foul, and incorrect no calls, which is when a player got fouled but no call was made. 
He then gave an advantage rate and a disadvantage rate by comparing the rates at which players received correct calls or incorrect calls and if the call was in their favor or not. He then categorized every player in the league based on merit into three tiers, superstars, stars, and non-stars. Now, what makes this research next level is that last two minute data is the most objective method to review officiating in the NBA. Since its introduction in 2015, last two minute data documents every call made within the last two minutes of every game that is within three points. All of these calls are then reviewed and reported by a league operations team to determine the accuracy of each and every call. As Peter mentions in his article, they provide transparency to referee performance and the closest thing that that we have to objective truth when it comes to the accuracy of a call or no call. And within his data, Peter tracked over 38,000 of these calls from nearly 2,000 games from 2015 to 2019. And after reviewing this data, he concluded that superstars are over 20% more likely to be advantaged on offensive calls compared to even stars of the league. In other words, superstars are more likely to get a foul call where there wasn't a foul 20% more often than anyone else. Overall, the referees tend to swallow their whistle, make incorrect no calls at a relatively even rate across all player groups, but are more likely to give lenient foul calls to superstars on offense. Superstars receive preferential treatment on both offense and defense compared to stars and non-stars. They are most likely to receive incorrect foul calls on offense and commit incorrect no calls on defense, which proves the existence of superstar calls even in the last two minutes of close games. It's a fantastic article, and I've left a link in the description if anyone wants to check it out. And all of this data just confirms what we already knew. Superstars get calls. So then why is Joel Embiid getting criticized for being on the receiving end of this star treatment when countless players before him did the same thing? Joel Embiid is the reigning MVP and scoring champion. Of course he's going to get some favorable calls going his way. But just like referees give preferential treatment to superstars, fans give preferential treatment to certain players as well. Specifically, players who have proven that their tactics and antics actually work when it matters. 36 points per game is no fluke. But when your production and efficiency plummet by nearly 25% in the postseason and your superpowers wear off when your team needs you most, all of a sudden that 36 a night feels a bit fraudulent. I feel like at this point in his career, Embiid's reputation precedes him. And right now, even above his incredible scoring abilities, his reputation is a choke artist. The man is a legit megastar, but it is still difficult to just look past his playoff blunders. You want to know if a player's play style is actually effective, if it's more than just a quick gimmick, if it works in the playoffs. And as great as he's been in the regular season, it's hard to look at Embiid's performances this year without the lens of skepticism because of his playoff lows. Right now he exists within the same vein as players like Allen Iverson and James Harden. MVP caliber players, scoring fiends, and offensive juggernauts who continue to fall flat when it mattered most. Is Joel Embiid cheating the game of basketball? No. Embiid is far from the first player to boost his game with brazen schemes and rule-bending methods. He's not the first player to benefit from superstar treatment, and he's also not the first player to receive criticism for it. Hope you all enjoyed, and as always, until next time.